All right. Welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, this one is going to be a longer one, so you better strap in. Um, because it's going to be like covering basically everything that has to do with creating an interior or MLO in one video. So it's going to be covering basically finding where you want to create your, you know, your interior, exporting what like the different files you need, creating the shell, vertex coloring, shell collision, uh, opening the, the door, windows, etc. Importing the files, changing the, the different file names, adding portals, uh, calculating portals, and we might dive into lights, but I think lights need their own tutorial. So it might only just be very quickly just to add a bit of a uh, bit of depth to your interior. It really adds just having lights in there adds a lot rather than just having self illuminating um, walls. It kind of it is really boring. So First things first, I'm going to assume that you know how to use OpenYV. I, I assume you, you know how to use Code, Code Walker. You have a rough idea of how YMAPs work, etc., etc. You know how to work in 3ds Max. If you do not know 3ds Max, I suggest you watch a few tutorials on how to use Max because I'm going to be running through a lot of things. I will be commenting on what I'm doing, but I'm not going to go into depth how I'm doing it. So. First things first, uh, in this one, I'm going to be using a pretty basic uh, building that is somewhat secluded, which is easier to work with in this case. There is no right or wrong. You can basically open up any building. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm just going to be using this building here, opening that up because uh, it's a single building. It's it's very like very easy to get a hold of, and there isn't really much to it, as you can see here. So this is the building I'm gonna be working with. So as per usual, you're gonna select it in Code Walker, and you're gonna just get the name. In this case, this is the the name for this building. Let's see. There we go. And this is the building we're going to be using. I'm just going to double check that we are not editing, like making sure that there's no, like this is the only building in the world. So we don't make changes to multi, no, like multiple of the same building. So we're just going to use code Walker to check the world for that. And in this case, there's only this building. So if we make changes with this model, it's not going to affect any other model in the world. So go. So we're going to, in OpenIV, we're going to select this model specifically. So this one here, export. And then as per usual, you're going to find the place you want to export your files to. I have my MLO tutorial, and this is from my previous attempts. Uh, I did a tutorial earlier where I just kind of gave up because it became really unorganized so this is going to be exterior so we're just going to export that there and we're going to check the which texture dictionary this is using so it's using this texture dictionary we're not going to use this for anything really this is just so it looks correct in in uh, in max so we're going to export that one so now we have this model so this is the model, obviously, that we're going to open up. We're going to remove the doors. We're going to remove some windows to make it look like there's windows. Uh, but we also want to open up the, uh, the collision. So obviously, if we just export this and we open up the doors, you won't be able to walk in because there's going to be collisions that will block you. So in Code Walker, we go up here and we click on the uh, collision tab. You can see that it, it will give us this view. So if we select, we right click this uh, this part on the house, it will give us this name up in the top right. So this is CX, CS6014.YBN. So if we go back here, it should, in this case not, 
more often than not, they're in the same folder. In this case, it's, it's not. So I'm just going to search for it. I'm going to find it here. I'm going to right click, export. And then we're going to create a new folder called it exterior call. So this is the exterior collision. And then we're going to find the exterior collision for the details. So it's probably going to be the same name, just high. Uh, so this is the bench. No. We're going to select one of the smaller parts. So you can see this is the high one. So we need both of these just to make it so you can... If you don't fix this, there's a high chance that you cannot pull out a weapon inside a building. Or if you try to shoot from the inside to the outside, there's going to be some, some collision that will block you. So make sure you get both of these exported and changed. So now we have both of these. Uh, we have the model itself exported. So now we're going to just jump into Max. Going to open, open up our GIMS Evo. In my case, I'm still using 2017. I find that to be the most, not the stable version. I think 16 is still the more stable version, but this, this one works for me. And then we're gonna import our our model. And we are also gonna import our collision. So this is this is pretty unusual, but this model has a built-in collision. Uh this is not very often that happens because most of the time any building you open up is using ex uh, external collision files or world collision or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> but this one seems to be for some reason having some embedded collision. So we will more than likely maybe be deleting that, but we will see. So first of all, we'll just hide these. These are the collision files. And then in here, we're gonna do the same. We're, we're gonna hide the collision. We don't really need that right now. We are gonna go to materials, turn off transparency, viewport clipping, and just make sure everything's good. And we're gonna go to our edible mesh, select everything, and then we're just gonna weld it. It makes it a bit easier to work with and some cases I'm gonna go to polygon mode again control a and select everything and then we're gonna click on auto smooth this is gonna fix the smoothing groups as you can see if we go back and we make everything into one smoothing group you can see how these shadows look all kinds of fucked up and that's gonna reflect in game so make sure that whenever you weld everything you make sure to smooth them correctly so for this one, uh, we will be removing the door, obviously. We will also be removing uh, this door since I'm, I'm going to be making two exits. And I'm going to be removing, I think, these two windows here. So these two. That one. So there we go. That's pretty straightforward. We're just kind of removing the, the things that we want to not, not be there on the model. So if I were to go in depth, I would obviously be removing these windows as well. Uh, the back windows and this window. But for this one, this is pretty basic. I'm going to be using these two doors. I'm going to be making a split in the middle here, making this a second room. So I'm basically covering uh, having multiple rooms as well. So obviously, if you have a building that is rotated in a lot of cases, when it comes to Rockstar's uh, buildings and things, they, they might be rotated at an angle. More often than not, they're rotated in a like five degree increment. Uh, so you could export a building that would be rotated like this. So just make sure you rotate it so it's lined up. In this case, you can see this is obviously lined up like it's a square 
instead of being like this. So make sure you line it up. And whenever you're done, you reset the rotation. And re resetting the rotation is basically just, let's say this is the rotation. You can see down in the lower right, you can just right click on these arrows that will reset the uh, rotation. It's easier to work on when it's lined up like this, because <clears throat> if I create a box, you can see the box is now lined up with the shape. But if the building was rotated like this, our box would be, you know, hard to work with. We would have to rotate it, uh, moving a, a uh, segment or a corner would be really tedious. So yeah, just make sure you line up your model when you start working on it. <clears throat> uh, also in this case, our building is pretty much centered, which makes it a bit easier to work on. If you do have a, a building that you're working on, let's say that is part of a bigger building. So the interior is located out here. You can create the interior so it will fit to this building. But you can also create the interior so it's located around zero. So basically in the center of your model. And then you move it in Code Walker. The ups, uh, there's a few ups and downs when it comes to it. Code Walker is a bit messy when it comes to moving the exterior uh, further away from the center of your model. It, uh, it, it will disappear and do some weird stuff. Uh, but it's easier to line up things, which you will see when I start working on this one. Uh, the downside to working on, say, having everything in the middle of the of the uh, of the scene or your model being zero zero zero, is that it's uh, you would have to line it up in Code Walker, which can be a tedious process because you literally have to line it up with zero 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 one decimals at a time to make sure everything is lined up. And just keep that in mind when you work on things. <clears throat> so we have our model. Export it. We uh, cut out the windows here, as you can see. So we're just going to start with a simple box. So I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be moving the box to zero, zero, zero. And then we're going to convert it to an editable poly. Go into polygon mode, select everything, click on flip. So you want to, obviously, in this case, the box is going to be black. But if you click on the plus, you go to X view. And then you click on face orientation. You can see green is good because that means that the back side is out, which is in the case of interior is what we want. You can also see if we hide the box, which is not letting me do for some reason. There we go. We hide the box. Uh, and we set flat color. And X view, face orientation. I don't know. In this case, it doesn't show, but it should show the same thing that these walls are like they should be. And the inside should have been green. So we're going to just unhide our box here. Seems like my 3 is max is having a bit of a rough time, but it is what it is. All right, so face orientation, obviously the green has to be outside, meaning that the backside is facing out and the, um, uh, what are you calling it? The, the faces are facing in. So in this case, that's what we want. So I'm going to just turn this back off and then we're going to start aligning our interior. So obviously this is too tall. So I just want to align these to the walls. I'm going to turn on my snapping, making sure I have vertex enabled. And I'm going to move it so it, it fits with these windows. I'm going to move the top down. We want the top to fit roughly with... I think these corners here. Like so. Gonna move this part in. Can align this side with this door frame. Like 
like so. This is also aligning with this window, which we're not going to be using, but it would be easier if we just opened this up as well. But uh, you won't be able to see this anyways. All right. We also have the front here, which we are going to be aligning with this door frame. As you can see, this also aligns with these windows, so that's good. So this is obviously where having some max experience comes into play. Uh, we're going to align the floor with the floor here. And that seems pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to start aligning and opening up this interior. So we go into our edge mode and just select the edges that goes around. Oh, actually, don't mind. Just to make sure the bag is also fitting here. So I'm just going to align that to the window. So obviously, if I opened up all of these windows, they would somewhat fit. So there we go. What I'm going to do is if I go into, uh, in this case, F3 mode, which will show the uh, wireframe, I'm going to hit Alt R, which is going to loop or ring around our box, selecting everything. I'm going to go to connect. I'm going to create two, which I will, if I select one of them and I hit Alt L, or in this case, loop. And then I will move it so they fit with this door opening. So there we go. Like so. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Alt L. And then I'm going to move it so it fits with the door opening. There we go. I'm going to do the same over here. So ring. Connect. Two. I'm going to select this one. Line it up with this window here and then here so obviously if you already know this shit you can skip uh skip ahead this is just going to be me aligning everything so it fits with the uh the door uh or with the exterior so connect l aligning uh, L again, and aligning. In this case, I want to make sure it's aligned with that one. All right. Oh. And it seems that our exterior is a bit wonky. So we're just going to move this one down to fit with this door instead. There's going to be a step down over here, which is fine. We can live with that. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing just around here. So we're going to ring around this. And we're going to connect twice. We're just going to move this uh, over here. I'm going to loop. And then we're going to connect to this door. Uh, loop. And so there we go. And then there's literally the last bit is going to be a ring around this entire entire thing here and connect once, which is going to be the height. So in this case, we're just going to start out with this door frame here. And then over here. Uh, we should be able to, since we have all of these points, we should be all right. So we can lower this bit with that one. We can do the same over here. If I can find a line. It is hiding behind there. Move this down to fit that one. All right. And then we have this here, which is we're also going to move down so it fits with this door like so. And then uh, this one is going to be fine, but we're still going to need the lower area. So we're going to 
be looping or ringing ring again around here, creating one, which we're going to move quite far down. So actually we might be just be able to align this one with this window frame like so the door frame. So we're going to move down to this corner like so. And here. And then we have that one. So this one should be all right because this is aligned with the bottom floor. So this one should be good. All right. So now we have the interior lined up with the exterior. So now I'm just going to stop deleting these. So if I have all these selected, I guess you can see now. And just hit delete. So now our exterior is open up to the, or our interior is open up to the exterior. Uh, I probably could fix this window as well, but in this tutorial, that's not really necessary. We should be all right. Obviously that's up to you if you wanna make that fit. So now the uh, interior is, is fitting the exterior as you can see here. And if we make sure we deselect everything and we have this movement tool, you can see that everything is set to zero, zero, zero. So that means that if we use the same coordinates as this building, the interior is gonna line up with the exterior because we basically made it to fit. Uh, I will show you in Code Walker. It's gonna make more sense when we get to that, that point. So now, we we're going to start texturing the interior. So in this case, I'm going to just find a, a simple texture dictionary or whatever you like a uh, texture reference that I want to use. And <clears throat> in this case, I'm just going to be using basically these walls of so this roof, these walls and this, this floor. I'm just going to be taking this, uh, this building here. I believe this is the one. There we go. So this con tower, we're just going to go back to our open IV. Find this, export it and put it into our texture reference. I'm just going to call it ref. And I'm going to go into archetype, make sure I get the texture dictionary exported as well. As so. And then we're going to go in and we're going to import texture reference, our tower here. I'm going to let it do its, its thing. So a good thing to keep in mind is that um, a lot of times Rockstar makes a model that is not always up to, I wouldn't say the standard, but up to a size specific, uh, like a door isn't always the same size in, in these models. So this in this case, this door might be smaller. So what you can do is that you can use uh, this website real quick uh, that I will link in my in my description as always where you can basically find every single model in the game so this is the website I will link it in the description so uh, we're just gonna use this actually if you search for door and we find a decent looking one we can use that as the reference. So this this door might be fine. Uh, it's a cutscene door. Yeah, you know what? That should be good. We're gonna use this. The reason I'm a bit uh, iffy about it. So we're gonna use this door as the uh, outside. So go back into Open IV. We're going to be finding a store, just to export it. I'm going to put it in the texture reference just because it's easy enough to find. And then there we go. 
now we have this door exported. <clears throat> the door is going to have a few extra things that we don't need. We just want this high to the high level. And then we're going to move the door and make sure that the, the size of this entrance is roughly the normal size. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to align it. <clears throat> so I'm going to move it up. Uh, in this case, it's being a bit of annoying. I'm going to turn off snapping. There we go. So I'm going to snap to the height. I'm going to snap it to there and then move it a bit to the side. like so and you can see that this door is a bit taller usually the case is that these are smaller in one or another way so having it be taller is not too bad and that's most likely also going to be the case over here with this one. but this is fine we can work with this so we're just going to hide this um so we also wanted to have two rooms for this so i'm just going to hide our exterior here like so and I'm going to create a second room that is split up by a simple wall. So I'm just going to loop or ring around here again. I'm going to connect with two that we make somewhat like minus 50 here. And then we can use this door over here as a reference to how wide we want this to be. So if we go up in this view and we select all of these here and just straight up delete these like so and then we just start uh, start putting these together again as a wall so you can see here we want this to align with these these lines that we have so I select the bottom I hold shift and then I drag up with uh, snapping on. That's going to align this to, to this line. I'm going to do the same here to the next one. And then to the top. I'm going to do it over here. This is just so we have a decent looking uh, mesh like so. And then we're going to do the same over here. Like so. And there. And then at the top. And then this and this, we want a bridge. You can see that there's a bit of a of scuffiness to that. So we're going to bridge these two as well. But we want this to be the same height. So we're also going to select this and bridge this here. So what bridge does is that it just kind of puts these the gap and closes the gap so at the top there so i'm going to go into vertex mode i'm going to select these two corners with snapping enabled and align it to this one then i'm going to select these corners as well and just align it with the back here like so I'm gonna just make these two and then like this this is just again having a bit of a nicer mesh flow all right, so as you can see here, if I if I select this corner, you can see these are not put together. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything is welded again. So I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to weld. I'm just going to turn this one down to like 001. As so you can see, before is 152 and after is 136. That means that it's going to weld these, these areas together. And then I can move these as one, which is good like so all right so now we have a wall in this in the middle of the room here so now we want to start texturing this so what you can do is you can just if we go into our material editor i'm just, i'm using the old material editor if you don't have this one if you hold left click on this button up here you can see it will show a drop down just make sure you select this one this is the old material editor it's a bit easier to work with Click on material, pick material from object. 
you can see this will now give us a long list of different materials that is from this building. So what you can do is you can just apply this to the interior, but we kind of just want three, three textures. We just want the textures from the inside. So we're going to go to our uh, default material here. We're going to click on standard. We're going to apply our multi sub object and discard the old and delete down. So we have three. Then we're going to call this one roof, wall and floor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on this, go to edible mesh. We're going to click on the wall. So the wall is number five, the floor is number six, and the roof is number seven. Then we go back here, we say, okay, so the, the wall, the wall was number five. Right click, copy, go back, and then wall, and just going to paste that. The roof was number seven, copy roof and the other one was number six so copy and paste so now we have these textures that we want to use so i'm just going to click on this i'm going to hide this like so and then we are going to just apply this or assign this to our material or to our model like so and you can see this is a mess. It looks like a mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix it uh, first of all. So we're going to select only the walls, which we're going to set to uh, material ID number two. And then we're going to select the floor only. As you can see, we have now, which we're going to set to number three. And then the roof only. This is going to be number one. So that's already good. Then... We're just going to start by selecting everything, control A. We're going to put our UVM or UVV map on it, our modifier UVV, where we have everything selected. We're going to go back to edible poly, hit F2, disable the red, so we have a rough idea how this is going to look. We're going to set this to box, and we're just going to do like three, three, three. This looks, this looks all right for what it is. I'm going to this collapse too. We want this the roof to be a bit more in line. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the roof only. We're going to apply the modifier again. And now you can see that it's it's made sure to fit uh, the texture to the roof. So what we can do is we can scale it up like let's say three times. That's not very good. So we're going to do a bit more five times. All right, so that's a bit better, but you can see that this this texture is a bit stretched in this direction. So what we're going to do is we're just going to up this one so it's more of a square. So we're going to 7.5. Uh, we're going to hide our lines. Never mind, we can't do that here. But that looks... Uh, maybe make it 8, like so. Gonna collapse this down into our poly and then we are pretty much good to go so while we're at it we already have the uh, the shell made and created we're gonna go into our vertex mode and then we're gonna select everything so control a and then we're gonna give it a uh, vertex color so usually for an interior the vertex color is just straight up green what green does it makes the walls glow or not glow but illuminate so if we turn this all the way down to black that means that the, the walls are not going to be illuminating at all it's only going to rely on uh lights we don't really want that it looks kind of bad unless you have really spot on lighting so we're going to set this to something like 140. That's uh, in between, in the middle of everything. If you want the interior to be lighter, obviously you just turn the green up. If you want it to be darker, you turn it down. You can also mix in a bit of uh, blue and red. And again, on my Discord, I'm going to be linking it in the description because I've had people give me shit for trying to you know, get traffic onto my Discord. So uh, in this picture, you can see what the different colors do so ambient occlusion artificial lighting which is green and moonlight 
So you can opt the, both the red and the blue a little bit if you want either of these. So let's say 55 on this one and 29, like so. Again, play around with these colors, but usually green and just green is, is good enough. So I'm going to just have these two on. Click on OK. And now our interior is, is somewhat... It's not perfect, but it's decent. It, it's a shell. This is where you want to start adding details. So this is pretty much done. So what you want to do is, as per usual, when you create a custom uh, model, I'm going to go into Create Object. I'm going to go into Models, add the Game Mesh modifier, and then a model... Uh, uh, modifier. And then our box, we're going to drag into this the model modifier. And then we're going to rename this to, in this case, we're going to call it for MLO underscore tutorial underscore shell. And the box, so the model itself, we're going to call the same just with hi at the end. So now we have the shell pretty much done. Now we want to create the collision. So easiest way to do this is when you have created the shell, this, uh, the shape, you just create a copy of this. So we're just going to take our uh, our shell, just going to clone it as a copy, and just call it OX1. So now we have the OX1. We're going to delete the game mesh. We're going to go back in the, into games, and then we're going to go to, uh, not export, create object, collision, gonna add the mesh modifier to OX1 and then we're gonna create a uh, composite like so and as you can see it's gonna give us some flags these we don't still we still don't care about these this is the same when I, when you create an embedded collision and then we're gonna move the OX1 in here I'm gonna copy this name and I've been getting a lot of flag for some reason that I call call my coalition for call but this is just for for it to be easier for me to figure out where like where are my things located and what are the names of these so i know this is the call and i know this is the shell so we're gonna hide our uh, our shell we're gonna select our ox1 and then we're gonna apply a collision uh like a uh collision mo not a modifier but collision material to it and in this case, we're just gonna make two different ones. We're gonna make the uh, the the walls, and I'm gonna make the roof and floor. So I'm gonna call it roof. So roof and floor. <laughs> and then for none, I'm gonna go to Gims Materials. I'm gonna find what I think these walls are gonna be like. So I think these are they're gonna be wood. Uh, I'm going to be solid wood, solid medium. This is how they react to like when you shoot the walls or you walk into the walls and walk on the floor, walk on the the, the the ceiling. What you also want to do is for room ID, you want to set this to one. In this case, we're going to create a second one for this room because this is going to be room number two. Uh, but in this case, or for, for now, we're just going to create this first one. Then so for the fluff, we're going to create a another games material that we're going to call for man-made then we're going to be selecting uh laminate i don't know i don't know what this is it might be some metal it might be some ceramic you know what let's just uh select ceramic there we go oh there we go go back so now we have these two so because we have two rooms or in this case, or in, in, in another case, if you had three or four or five rooms, you would have to do the same thing. But because we have two rooms, we're going to add two more, which we're going to call walls two and roof two. We're going to copy these into these two here. And then we're going to go in and we're going to make room ID two and room ID two. So now we have these two. So go into edible poly we assign this material to our model like so you can see this looks all right but it's still not entirely correct so we're gonna select this 
room one. And then we're going to assign. Uh, there we go. We're going to assign. Just set ID number one at first. And then. Minimize that. And then we're going to select the roof. And the floor. But not the walls. And these are going to be number two. Like so. And then we're going to do the same thing with the second room. Just with the other material so we're just gonna set this to two and then we're gonna deselect the walls and make this oh my bad this is gonna be three which is gonna be walls and then the roof and the floor is gonna be four now you can see that if we go by these walls two and floor two is the room id number two and this is room id number one so basically we have room one and we have room two this should make sense to you. If not, try to wrap your head around it. It, it, it. it makes sense, especially like if you start having more rooms, you have room ID one, room ID two, three, four, which has to fit the different rooms that you create. All right, so now we have the collision created, uh, almost. If we go back to our mesh, collision mesh modifier, we have to make sure that this sets to BBH and then zero, zero, 002. Same as embedded collision, we have map animal, map cover, map dynamic, map weapon, and map vehicle. And that's pretty much it. So now we have our exterior and our, or our exterior, interior, uh, and our collision created. So now we want to go to our world collision. We want to be able to obviously go inside this building. So if we just hide these two for now and then we unhide our exterior collision so the high and the uh, cs01 we select one of these boxes and then we had set to make it go to like a focus and then you can see we have this collision over here this is the collision that we obviously we want to work on so i am going to work on not the details at first we're going to hide those but just the rough oh the shape on this you can see this is the box so this box which is not part of the high is what will block you from going inside the building you can see this is literally just a block which is the way the rockstar does it usually when it comes to these buildings because it's easier to just have a block around the entire building so what you can do is I'm going to unhide the exterior again. This will give you an idea where like the walls are and the windows. Obviously, you don't want to be able we we don't want to be able to jump in and out the windows in this case. That doesn't really matter. So, easiest way to go about this is when you select the big block the big block here. You go to view and then you click on local. You also do the same thing with the scaling. You click on local. So if this would be at an angle, uh, you are able to move this freely. As you can see, if I if I rotated this like 60 degrees, and you can see now I'm still able to move it on that uh, that axis. So if this was at, at an angle, I will still be able to move it at the correct like angle. As you can see here, these are rotated like Third degrees but i can still move it like so so if we go back to our exterior here and we select the big block what we want to do is we want to kind of just hash out the the walls as four walls rather than one big wall so i'm going to use the the big block as a reference so i'm going to hold shift and then i'm going to scale down the block which is going to create a copy like so and I'm gonna make the walls a bit thinner like so and then I'm gonna move this still with uh, with snapping enabled I'm gonna move the corner here to match the corner on that one and then I'm gonna just shift hold and do the same thing over here as a copy 
that was a bit more annoying. You know what? I'm going to do it without snapping. I'm going to just make sure that when I can see it, that's where it should be. There we go. I'm going to select the big block again, like so. And then we're going to create another one, another copy, just in the other direction. That's a copy. And I'm going to move it this way. Like so. So that should be good. Maybe making this thinner. Like so. There we go. And I'm going to move another one over here. So obviously now we have four walls, but that means that this entrance is still going to be blocked. So what we want to do is, first of all, we want to get rid of this big, the big block. This one we don't really need anymore because now we have walls instead. So we're just going to delete this one like so. But then we're going to select our new walls. And then we want to make these walls fit this doorway here. So I'm just going to scale it down and move it, scale it down a bit more. Uh, so it fits the door frame. There we go. Obviously, if you want the window to be enterable as well, usually that's pretty rare. You would also make some of these blocks go around. So this is like playing with Lego. So you can say you kind of build up the, the, the collision around the exterior. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this over here and that's another copy I'm just gonna scale it up like so and then I'm gonna create the last one that is gonna be in the middle that is gonna just be the top here like so and then I'm gonna scale it down and move it up That should be good enough. All right. I'm going to do the same over here real quick. So I'm just going to do this real quick without really commentating. It's basically the same thing. So that's pretty good. So that is the the basic collision. Now we, what we want to do is we want to remove these, which is the high. So this is the detail collision. This is when you shoot at this door, it's going to absorb the bullets. You can still walk through it, but it's going to absorb the bullets and it's going to react like, hey, this is a door. This is a wooden door. So it would react as like a wooden collision. So we're just going to select these different pieces and just straight up delete them. There we go. Same over here. So what something to keep in mind is that sometimes these places are a mesh. You can see if I select the road over here, this is part of a bigger mesh. So if there's a piece that you could not just delete as a box, you would have to find it and then select it as a mesh and delete it. You can see this roof part is a mesh. So if I wanted to remove that, I would have to, you know, Click the mesh, go into mesh modifier, and then delete it like that. For these doors, I didn't really have that, so it's not really an issue. So if I select so that's not what I want it. It's like this wall. You can now see that the interior or the inside is kind of open. Uh, there's a bit of uh, some some gap between the, the door and the floor. That doesn't matter. We're gonna have the collision there instead. That should be good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select these pieces that we don't want to export. So the tower and the door, I'm just going to freeze those. That's going to make them not show up in our export window. I'm going to go back to our exterior. And like I said, this is pretty rare. 
uh, that th this has an embedded collision. But for this one, it seems to have one. I don't know why. I'm just gonna make the assumption that uh, it's not used. So I'm actually gonna straight up delete this. We'll see if this comes back and bites me in the ass. Like I said, it's pretty, pretty fucking rare that these are embedded. So this shouldn't be an issue depending on where you select that you want to build. All right, exterior, uh, out, outer colli or world collision, and then we have our shell. So we're just going to select our shell real quick. And then in games, we're going to go to tools, and then we're going to cr uh, click on embed game material texture. This is going to embed the textures that we used on our shell to the shell. This way, we don't have to, uh, like, define a, uh, what do you call it? call it, a texture dictionary. What I also want to do is, I want to make sure that our pivots are set to 0, 0, 0 for both our shell and our collision. So that seems to be all right. Okay. So we're just going to export. So I'm just going to create an MLO tutorial. I'm going to create a new folder called output. Oh. Output. There we go. This is just something I do for me to make it easier to like figure out where things are. So we have the exterior. We have the uh, tutorial shell. We have the two uh, world collisions. And then we have our collision file for the, the uh, interior. I'm just going to export that. And then in the meantime, I'm going to go back into OpenIV. I'm going to assume as well that you know how to set up your folders. And if you don't, go back and watch literally my first tutorial. I believe I I, uh, I made. So I'm going to go in, into my tutorial RPF and I'm going to download the uh, interior template that I created. Again, I'm going to link it down in the in the description so you don't have to join my discord and i'm just going to take the interior template and put that into our files here and then i'm just going to drag these five files into open iv so you can see we have an interior template shell and interior uh, template collision these two you can just straight up delete these are just for naming and we're going to just do some quick renaming so i'm just going to delete these two and I'm going to go back to our output folder where we have our files. And we can see this is done exporting. And then I'm going to just drag these into OpenIV. So now we have the exterior collision files and MLO tutorial collision and our shell. All right. So next thing. We want to rename our interior template an interior template uh, Milo or MLO. We're going to just rename these to the same thing as above. So it's going to be MLO tutorial. And the same down here, MLO tutorial dot Milo. What we're then going to do is we're going to right click Y type and click on edit. We're going to hit control A. Open something like Notepad++. In my case, or you can use just normal notepad or whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to paste that in and then you're going to find just a name. You're going to highlight interior template, hit control F, and we're going to click on replace. And we're going to replace everything with MLO underscore tutorial, which is the name that we were going with. And because the template is already created, you're basically just renaming it to use the new collision and the new shell and the new, uh, the new, uh, what is it? What's it called? The new Y maps and the new Y type. So we're going to replace all. This should replace seven as it did. I'm going to select everything. Control C, Control V, and then click on save. I'm going to do the same thing for the Y map. Select everything. And just gonna go to replace again and replace all. That should replace three. Gonna replace, uh, place that in there and click on save. 
So now we have all of these files. What I'm going to do, because that's easier for me to work with, is that I just move all of these files into my uh, server folder already. So in my resources, I have my tutorials, I have my MLO, my stream folder, and then I'm going to just, in my stream folder, I'm going to create a new uh, folder just called tutorial. I'm assuming that you know how to start a resource and all of these things. Like these are very basic things. If you don't know how to do it, I suggest you go watch the tutorials on how to do it. This is not a tutorial about these things, so I'm not going to cover it. So I'm just going to take all of our files and put it in here. So we have our change collision. We have our change model and we're just going to go into code walker. We're going to close it for the new files to take effect. So I'm going to make it allow it to open up. I'm going to create on or click on new and then on open. Then we're going to paste our path, which is in my case is MLO steam stream tutorial. I'm going to select MLO tutorial Milo. And then we're going to find our MLO tutorial collision which is located underneath the world. So you can see that this is, is floating a little bit, which is fine. Uh, what you can also see is that our box here is incorrect. And the reason this is incorrect is because our BB mins and max are based on the old model that we had as a template. And the, the way I usually fix this is that I use Y type creator. I click on the usual open, open, and I go into uh, my output folder. So there we go. And then I go and select my output shell. Click on calculate and then uh, import BBs. And then I just click on create and then I click on view created. Now we're gonna have the BB min max and the BS center and the BS radius and these other things, but we kind of just want these three lines. So we're going to copy these. So control C, we're going to go back into open IV and then we're going to go into our white type and edit. And then the first, I believe line nine, 10 and 11, we're just going to replace this. Then we're going to take these two lines. So BB min and BB max, which we're going to scroll all the way down to rooms. And then we're just going to paste in here for now, because this uh, template only has one room. We're going to create a second room. So these are going to get changed. But for now, we're just going to paste these two in and then we're going to hit save. We're going to take our MLO Y type and put that into our tutorial again and just make sure we have this updated. So because Code Walker is Code Walker, we're just going to close code walker we're going to save it and make sure we have the project just because it's easy to open name the pro project tutorial just going to close this down open code walker back up so something with code walker is that when you uh change something it doesn't take effect until you close down code walker and open it back up so if you create a model you update a model you need to close it and open it for it to show so open our tutorial Go back to our collision. And now you can see that this boundary box is now fitting our, our shell here. Oh, okay. There's a little bit here that I forgot to, to change. We can update that. In this case, it doesn't really matter. It's a minor detail. So that's really up to you. So what we want to do, we want to move our Y map. So, so it's, it's in line with our new location. So we're going to fly all the way down to our house which was located over here. Uh, it was over here. There we go. And now if we fly it close to this, you can see that this is opened up with windows are open. The door is open. Uh, the other door is open. So if we go to selection tool and we select, make sure we select the, the not decal. That's not the one we want. We want the actual house. So this is the house. And then we add this to project Then we go and copy the position, copy. We go to our MLO and we paste that. 
And then we go back and we select the house again. We select the rotation. And we put that rotation there. Ooh. Well, we're just going to calculate extents, calculate flax. And then we're going to remove this Y map since we don't really need that. Save this. Uh, close the project because we moved this interior quite far. So we need to recalculate the extents for the Y map. Or, or if we don't do that, it's going to kind of be wonky. So there's a bit of misalignment. So we're going to just rotate this so it fits like so. So because we did in in max, we made sure that everything is aligned. You can see that the door frame is literally perfectly aligned. There's a little, little tiny bit of a gap. Usually you would fix this with having a door frame model around and, you know, running. Uh, I don't remember the name of these, but the things that run around the, the lower part of the floor here that runs around. So the perfect or the, the, the interior is literally perfect matching with the exterior. So if we save this and we just make sure we update the white type as well, just because it wants to. We haven't really made a change. So now we have the, the Y map and the Y type. What we also want to do is we want to double check that the um, the collision is correct. So usually when you import a collision file into OpenIV, it doesn't reflect in Code Walker. So what you want to do is you want to go to files, you want to go to open, and then you want to go to YPN. And then when you want to open your YPN files, this is going to update the collisions. So you can see if your collisions are actually correct. So we go back to collision. And now you can see that, hey, we actually have the correct collision. Like the doors here, the, the stairs are here. Uh, the roof is slanted, I guess. Shouldn't have an effect since you probably will never really go to the roof. But you can probably, if that is an issue, if the roof, roof is an issue, you would just move the roof up or make the uh, this collision box a little bit thinner. You can, if you feel, you know, if you feel like you want to give it a try, you can try and do this in Code Walker. Since Code Walker does have an MLO changer kind of thing. Anyways, that's not what we're here for. We just checked and everything is correct. So we're just going to remove these YBNs again. Uh, we don't really need them in this project. So we're going to go back to Entity. And we're just going to move this fella. This is our trusty. Uh, trash can that I use for my template. I'm just going to move him over to this corner. Did I? I did. I, I rotated this house for some reason. There we go. Just making sure it's, it's back. To so you can see these are the windows that we obviously didn't cut out. Um, these are not going to be an issue when you go inside the interior itself. They're not going to show up, but right now you can see them. So we're just going to make sure that we have all of this saved. So next thing, just going to make sure I'm reading my notes. So we fixed the world import files. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create the portals. So the portals are what's going to make you able to walk from the outside inside a, um, interior without the interior being all fucky invisible and just these these things they will as you kind of work on it it will make sense so we're going to start by creating uh our second room because we obviously have the back room here and we have these this the first room so right now we only have one room selected so i'm just going to go into our render and click on show GTA V map. So we just have this as the only thing. In room, or if you click on room, you go to Y type and go to MLO and you click new room. And then we save and then we close the project. And then we open the project. <sighs> All right, we're, we're just going to restart. <laughs> we're just going to restart Code Walker because Code Walker is being a bitch. Again, code. I, I I have all 
the fucking respect of Dexy for what he's created. It's fucking amazing. Obviously, shout out to him for creating this amazing tool. But sometimes Cold Walker can be a bit of a pain in the the ass. All right. And I don't know what that's about, but uh, that's fine. Now we have the two rooms. So we're going to call this uh, entrance. And then this is going to be room uh, back. Back room. Just because. So obviously that the, um, the size is going to be a bit off for these rooms. So when we created or we calculated the extents, these extents are based on this entire shell. That's not what we want. We want th these two rooms to have a BB min max that is roughly the size of these rooms. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back into your uh, into max and we're going to hide everything but the shell itself. And then we're going to edible mesh, go into vertex mode, and then you're going to select for obviously this is going to be for room number two. You want to select the lower left uh, and copy these coordinates down here. And make sure you have movement tool selected and you have vertex mode and you have view. I'm gonna go back in here and in BB min, you're gonna paste these. So for the first line, it's gonna be 4229. Four, and the second, 77, seven, like so. And this one, like so. And then for max, you're gonna select the top right. So it's basically whatever it is across from each other. You could also do this corner to this corner. That doesn't really matter. You could probably also do from the top corner to the lower corner. It doesn't really matter just as long as the two points are like, uh, I don't know what you would call that, but like at each corner, uh, yes, across from each other. So I'm going to select this corner up here. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to put that into the max. And then do the same here. And I'm going to do here. So this is now for entrance because I'm an idiot. I'm going to copy this into back room. Uh, min, max, like so. And then for the entrance, I'm going to do the same over here. So in this case, because we want this middle part to fit, I'm going to select this lower corner for the entrance. And then this. And this. All right, so that's fine. And I'm going to select the top. Which is also fine. So, and like so. So, I don't know why it, it's doing this. It seems the rotation is a bit messed up here. I'm gonna just double check that I can. <laughs> I don't know what's up with the with Code Walker here in this case, but it should be fine. It's showing the uh, the zero 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 rotation for some reason. I'm just gonna try and rotate this back to zero zero one, just to make sure that everything is like it should be. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save the Y type. I'm gonna save everything. I'm just gonna open up the project again. I don't know what's up with Coworker, but this should be working just fine. This is after we added the other room. So I think the Coworker might have a, had an aneurysm for some reason. Which is fine. It can, uh, <laughs> it can do whatever it wants. All right, so that should be fine. Usually, if Code Walker doesn't have an aneurysm, this should be lining up just fine with these. As you can see, Limbo is the entire thing, and then we have the back. And we have, yeah. 
All right. So portals. We want to add two portals. Uh, actually, we want to add one, two, three, four, five, five portals, I believe. Five portals. Five portals. And for some reason, my interior just rotated again. Jesus Christ, Code Walker, would you? I, f I feel like Code Walker is just not on my side today. It's like, hey, you're going to be doing a tutorial, right? I'm going to just fuck with you. All right, save that. Close this. I don't act accidentally select it. And then we're going to go to our tools. Go to Y type. Go to MLO. And new portal. So the way that these uh, portals work is that they're going to have these coordinates, which is based off of your shell. So as before, we're going to create these uh, these portals by just taking coordinates from our shell. And the way we do it is you usually start in the lower left corner and then you work your way up to the top left, top right, lower right. So for the entrance, we're going to select the bottom left. And then it's just going to be some copy paste work. Um, so this is going to be a, a little bit of a long segment because I'm going to have to copy paste a, a few details. So like so. And then the top left. That is not correct. There we go. Top right. And obviously the, the reason you want to do this is because the way that <sighs> bro. Um when you do it from the inside in this manner, usually when you put the to and from, we'll get to that. But you're basically going to and from the exterior to the interior. It's always, you, when you have this uh, like nailed down, it's always gonna be the same. You're always gonna go from room one to room zero. You can also flip the portal. Uh, as you can see, room from one, room two, zero. And then the flags we're gonna go a bit more into. I'm gonna link a website where you can check different flags and what they do and what's common and what common flags you use for things. So if we go into interior instance and we click on this, our portal is now at the back while our interior is rotated. I'm just gonna save this and I'm just gonna close down <laughs> code blocker and open it back up and hope that it resets everything. <laughs> did I, did I rotate my interior? No, my interior is fine. So I'm going to have to do some troubleshooting here. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to close, close code worker. And then I'm going to go into open IV. I'm going to import my uh, Y map and my Y type. Like so. I'm going to go into my Y map. And then in the rotation, I'm going to make this zero and and then hope that this is going to reset the entire thing like so let's double check i'm going to check my y type oh the shell the shell is rotated are you what why why 
Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Just going to save that. Put that in back into my tutorial. Going up, Code Warper. I don't know what's up with that. How, how the fuck? That's a, that's a first for me. All right. Gonna go back, go to, and then we're gonna see if everything is lining up. There we go. Now everything is lining up again. And then we're just gonna rotate. There we go. And now you can see that the entrance is lining up with the door perfectly. So I'm just, <laughs> just gonna move this prop bin inside again. Our trusty bin. I'm gonna move this over to this corner. And then we're gonna add a few more portals. So we're just gonna go down to portals, go to two, uh, not tools. Thank you. Y type, MLO, portal. And then we're gonna just go through this the same way. So lower right, lower right. And then let's see, 30. So that's the same axis. So we're not only going to do these two. So like so. And like so. Like so. Like so. Like so. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What goes wrong? No, that's fine. All right. Okay. So there we go. And then again, if we go back to interior instance and we select this, you can see that the window is lining up perfectly. So lower left, top left, top right, lower right. So I'm going to do the next one. MLO, portal, do such and such. And now you can see we have interior, uh, interior instance enabled. So we can actually see when we start moving these coordinates around. So if you don't want to see me do this, you can skip ahead. I'm going not, I'm going to be doing this for the next, at least five minutes more than likely. But if you want to see roughly how I go about it, or, oh my god. Hopefully I will be get, getting a tool mate for this to be easier, where you can just select the different vertices and it will output this just straight up. So you can just select the four vertices and it will just output these four core or these four lines. So you can just copy that in. All right, there we go. So now we have these three portals made. Now we're going to make these two for this window and for this doorway here. So Y type and hello, new portal. And then what we're going to do. So we want this uh, portal to be roughly in the middle. And we want to do it from here so from room number two to room number one so we select both of these vertices because that's going to make the uh the portal be in the middle of this so i'm just going to select that and then we're going to update this and this and this Gonna move up to the top and that's these two only yes sir all right all 
right? So it's like those two, which is the same coordinates of those. All right, we use the door basically, so that's that would make sense. So all we all we really really doing is just removing these points. So there you go. So we're not gonna update the portal this yet. We're just gonna add the last portal, just so we don't forget. So Y type MLO new portal, and so that is the same. And like I said, this tutorial is going to be quite long. So if you're still here, I'm assuming that you really want to create an MLO and I'm proud of you for sticking with me for this, for this long. So the first one is incorrect. Uh, I forgot to do the first coordinate. All right, there we go. So, <clears throat> so now we have all these five portals created. So these three right here are all gonna be zero to uh, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero. That's because it goes from the outside to the inside and it goes from outside to room one. So from room one to zero, zero being the outside, one being the inside. What you want to do is for this door here, which is going from room number one to room number two, we want to make it room two to one or from two to one because we made the coordinates from the inside like so. You can see the bottom left. So it's basically the same way it would work if we went to the outside. So it, it's going from room two to room one. This window here is also to the outside but inside this room. So it's going to be from room number two to zero because it's room number two to the outside. That should make sense. So these are actually pretty much done. Uh, this is pretty much done, but there's a few things to keep in mind, uh, especially when it comes to adding entities. So usually when you have a portal, you would add an entity to the portal. Usually in the case of uh, the exterior or interior, you add the doors to the portal itself. The same goes with here and here, maybe even with the, not so much with these, maybe with the windows, but it can be done as well. And the reason you do that is when say you walk outside and the portal is not in, in view. So you can basically stand here and then the door, which would probably be tied to, let's say room number one would disappear because the portal is not in view. Hence that in, in according to the game, you are not seeing the portal. You're not seeing what's inside. And that means you're not seeing the door. So there is a, let's say the door frame is a good example of something you want to keep in the portal entities. And the doors is something you also want to keep as the door entities. So I'm going to go back to that website we were, we were looking at before. I'm just going to find two doors. So in this case, I'm going to use maybe not apartment doors, maybe apartment doors. I feel like these are not doors that actually work. I don't know. I'm just going to go and skip ahead a little bit. I'm just going to use these doors, even though they're actually fucking trash. Uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is for portal number one, this portal and this portal and also this portal. I'm going to add a new arc, uh, not new archetype. What am I doing here? Uh, MLO new entity. Make sure you have the right portal selected and then you click on new entity. And then we're just going to copy the model in there. So in that case, that, that is the door we're going to be using. And then we're just going to move it as per usual. So it fits roughly with the door. All right. 
So these doors are a bit bigger. Like I said, that's that's fine. As long as it's not the door frame that's too big, we can basically live with that. So it's not going to be perfect, <laughs> but it's going to be all right. So there we go. And then we also have that step, but uh, yeah, I will live. Actually, let's move that door out a little bit. It's not perfect, but it works. Yep. We're going to go to the next one, which was portal number. I think it was number two. And we're going to do the same thing. So MLO, new entity at that. I'm just going to move this into place. Door is way too big, but we'll live. And then we're going to select from two to one. I'm going to do the same thing. New entity and door like so i'm just gonna move this into the middle oh now you, you can really see that there's a size difference here but we'll live but again that's why i said make sure you have you know the right sizes export a door and use that as a reference to how big you want the door to be all right we should be all right. They're too big, obviously, but that's uh, that's fine. We'll live. So we're just going to save this. Just make sure everything is good. Save that. And now we have doors. So like I said, there is a website where you can basically have the, the different um, portals that you like portal flags. So they're curvy in nature. I'm not sure if I said, I said his name right, has a pretty in-depth um, website of different things. So if we go to tutorial and then we go to general map modding, and then we go to flags and then we scroll down. You have Y type flags, which we're not really going to be using in this case. We're going to be looking for MLO portal flags. And you can, you can look at these and, and like kind of read up on what they do and how they are used. You can see window flex, door flex, door flex connected to MLOs. And then we have MLO room flex. Um, kind of just mix and match what you think is the correct one. So for this, we just have 32 and 64. So 32 renders limbo as LOD used in the roof windows mechanical mechan uh, Michael's house. We don't really need that. So we're going to disable that one. So we have 64. Disable portals while the door is closed. Oh, this is the portal flags I'm reading. What am I What am I doing here? My life. Room flags. My bad. Reduce the vehicle population and then reduce pet population. So it's 32 and 64. So obviously you can have these on. You can not have these on. When it comes to 5M, it doesn't usually make a difference, I believe. Um, the back room has the same. You can still see outside. So for our portal flags, we're going to go to window, which is either 9, 65, 72, 73. And then we're going to select. This is our window. And then we're going to take a look again. We're just going to go with 9, which is height inside from outside. Nope, we don't want that one. We want extra bloom. Hmm, maybe. Uh... There isn't really a lot of these that we care too much about. So I'd leave these at zero. Obviously mess around with it. There is some 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 that are better than others, especially if you have windows that are one way. Let's say that you can not see from the outside, but you can see from the inside and out. You would uh, use how uh, hide inside from outside because you don't want to render the inside when you can't see inside anyways. But in this case, we're just going to leave these at, at zero. There is also for the doors. There is hide when door is closed. Usually you would use this when it comes to, let's say, an interior where there's no windows. 
That means when the door is fully closed, you will not render the inside. It's a bit flucky at times, but you can make it make it work. There is also mirrors, which we're not going to be covering in this one. But I believe in, in, in these, in this case here, we're going to have, we're just going to leave these at zero. I highly suggest taking a look at this website, reading up on the different flags, and then, you know, messing around with things. All right. So what we also want to do is we want to change the time cycles for these two rooms. Uh, right now we have apartment high for entrance and back room. Uh, there is a long list. Again, I have it linked on my Discord. I can, I'm can i going to put it in the, the uh, description where you can see the different time cycles. You can mess around with it, see which one you find to be the best one for your interior. In this case, I'm going to be using MP apartment high for the entrance. And for limbo, I'm going to use int gas station. All right. For the back room, I'm going to be used in gas station. So there we go. So now we have these two time cycles. And then the last thing, we are going to calculate the portals or how many portals you have in the different rooms. And the reason you do that is because you need to tell the room how many portals there is. And if you don't do this, they're not going to work. And either they're not going to show anything, they're going to act up. And when you walk inside, things are not going to do like what they're supposed to do. So there, there's a lot of things. So you want to make sure you have portal count set the correct way. If you have too many portal uh, portals defined, you're going to straight up crash. So keep that in mind. If you get near your interior and you crash, it's because you have too many portals defined. So floor ID, we're just going to update these to match entrance back room. So one and two. And then for portal count, uh, for the entrance, we have in total one, two, three, and four. So we have four portals for the entrance room. So portal count is four. For the back room, we have one and two. So portal count is two. For limbo, we have one, two, three, and four. And the reason we have four is because Limbo counts every portal going to the outside. So every um, every portal that has zero. So you can see one, two, three, and four. If you had a mirror, a mirror is also using zero to one. That would also be defined in limbo. So keep that in mind that everything that goes to zero is, uh, is defined in limbo. So limbo is four. And I have this handy calculate portal count that uh, a guy named Yoda on my Discord mate. So if I click on this, it should say four, and here it should say four, and here it should say two. Let's see if we set this to zero. I click calculate, it says two, four, and four. So that is correct. So we now have the portals, uh, portal amount or portal count set. We have the portals created. We have the entities for those. Um, for those uh, portals made. And then I'm just gonna add an entity to the back room, just so it has a single entity in there. I believe there is some fuckiness if there is an empty room or a completely empty room. So I'm just gonna move prop alien egg up. So obviously this is a very basic guide on how to create an MLO. I would very much suggest that you look into adding a lot of details to like these corners down here, like a lot of grunge, all these kind of things that makes it look live in and worn. But for now, we're just going to run with this. So I'm going to save all of this, make sure everything is saved and good to go. Make sure we have everything in our stream folder. So we have, uh, we're going to have to update the manifest real quick. I forgot. So manifest, save manifest. Save that on the tutorial, like so. And because um, you can rename manifest, you don't want uh, more than one manifest file with the same name. So for this one, I'm just going to call it manifest uh, MLO. So as long as this has this name, uh, you can basically name it whatever at the end and it's still going to work. So we have the updated collision. We have the MLO tutorial collision, Milo, YMAPS, the shell, the Y type. That should basically be it. So 
let's give it a try since we haven't tested. So I'm just going to fire up my server and then we're going to go take a look. As per usual, I'm just going to close down Cold Walker, so I'm sure I have uh -oh. I have all the FPS. <laughs> oh, yeah. So because I saved the Y map while I was loading loading into the server, it is now going to complain and crash. So that was my fault. But I'm just going to do this again. <clears throat> yeah. So keep that in mind. Don't ever update a Y type or an MLO or a Y map while the server is running. just going to teleport up to our interior which is located i believe there so uh player related wait this linear teleport to waypoint and it is downloading a lot of asset and then we, we turn around wait where's our interior oh it's over here then you can see there's a bit of uh stuff with the uh, the render distance we can fix that fairly easily but you can see that you can see the inside you can see the doors and then if we go up to the door also don't mind the lagging if you go up to the door the door is locked <laughs> because of course it would be because of uh, incorrect lags Oop. I believe but if we go inside the door is also locked. <laughs> That's pretty typical. So we're just going to head out and we're going to fix that real quick. While we're also going to fix the occluders because there's most likely an occluder in the way. So the way occluders work is that they they are a box or a model that tells the game that they don't have to render anything behind that box. It's a optimization to the thing. Um, so a lot of times if you have an MLO you've created and you go inside the MLO and it starts acting up, like acting all wonky, that could be the reason. I'm just going to just copy these flags for this door real quick. And then I'm going to open up the Y map, go to the Y map. And I'm going to also open up the, the Y type there. So I'm going to go to portals. Maybe these, these doors weren't the best idea. So I might just replace them real quick. So I'm just going to go and find some doors that I know work. Uh, I'm going to go to the... What's it called? The... This here, whatever that's called. I'm just going to select that one. And I'm just going to set that as these doors. Like so. All right. That should be good. So just save this real quick and then we're going to go into occlusion mode which is the last one so if we go into occlusion mode you can see there's a lot of boxes showing up now i'm pretty sure that if we go in here 
uh, it will also show a box. Let me see if we can make it show up correctly. So I'm just gonna save this. I'm gonna close our project. Then you can see if we fly into this house here, there is a box that is pretty much the same size as the house. You can see it down here. That means when you stand here, it tells the game that anything behind this box, it should not render. It's the same if you stood over here, it will not render anything behind it. But it also means that if you're inside, it can mess up with your portals and basically a lot of things. So the way you go about removing these clues is that you have to do it manually, but it's pretty straightforward. So if I can, let's see if I can select this. There we go. It is now selected. And then we go into selection and then we have the name of the occlusion. So we are going to open up, not open IV. Uh, we are going to open up code Walker and then code Walker RPF Explorer. We're just going to search for this file specifically. And then we are going to in our stream folder we're gonna pull this out in there and then we're just gonna put this back in i don't know why i did this in code worker but hey so we have this occluder 01.ymap so we're gonna right click and we're gonna click on edit if we go back here you can see that index is 32. you can kind of use that uh to find which box occluder it is it it would be number 32 but what you can also do is you can look at these uh these coordinates in the y map see uh the position or see. there's usually a good one to go by there we go so center y so if you search for center i center y and we have this one and then we check the x which is 20 28 fits and then 17 so we know that this is the correct box so we're just going to straight up delete this and save that sometimes uh i'm just going to cover that re like real quick sometimes they use a model instead as you can see here there's a white box around so if i open up this occluder real quick and then we render and show uh, apparently that doesn't work but you can see there's a white box. The way you would go about removing this, this is a model instead of a just a box. So inside these Y maps, and you scroll down, there's these here. The occluder models. The way to go about that is you literally just select an item. So let's say this is the one. And then you just delete it. So from item to item, you delete this, you save it, you open it in Code Walker and check if it's gone. And then if it's gone, obviously you, you deleted the right one. If it's not, you go back, you revert, uh, revert that deletion and you delete another one. And then you kind of try for each one. So in this case, we, uh, we have this, this one open. And for some reason, the box is still there. We're just going to double check if I deleted the correct one. Yep, it is the correct one. So I don't know why it's not disappearing, but <clears throat> this this one. Oh, I know why. Because I didn't put in the updated one. So if we close project. No, we don't want to save that. And then we open up again. And there. So now you can see the box is gone. So we are just going to remove this from the Y map. Click on save. Close Code Walker. And then we're going to fire up the server again. And now 
crossing fingers, everything should be working correctly. This is the issue with trying to make a tutorial in MLOs. There's so many small things that can go wrong that it's, that's usually easy to fix, but will draw out a tutorial. And this is even after I, I made notes on what to cover and so on and so forth. So basically like the rotation, the uh, shell rotation and so on. So I will probably be making some timestamps so people can just kind of skip over like the rotation thing where I realized that, hey, I done goofed the rotation. I, I, I rotated the interior for some reason. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to teleport back up here. There we go. Almost, almost had it. All right, so let's see if these doors are going to open this time. There we go. So I have the thing called MLO Dev Tool, which is the one showing me the different portals. And as you can see, the coordinates, it's saying the portals and whatnot. So I'm just going to disable that stop MLO Dev real quick, like so. Now you can see we can walk in and out of the, the portals. We can look inside. We can walk inside over here and we can walk from this room to this room. We have our egg here. So we cannot jump outside these windows because there are still collisions because we didn't move these co remove these collisions. So if I give myself a weapon and I try to shoot at this window, you can see it still eats the bullet like there's a glass. That's because there's a leftover collision from the original windows, which were glass. In this case, this can work in your favor. If you just add a glass model around here, uh, it's still going to block the bullets. You can also just remove it and then embed the glass collision. So that is pretty, pretty much it. We are done. We have created our interior and the rest is really up to you how you're going to fill up the interior, how you're going to like add details. And obviously you can make it prettier. This is pretty quick made it, and it doesn't look great. And you can also see that the interior is kind of dark, but not really. Uh, so if we go to night and see the interior is the same color, really, because that's the what we set the vertex colors to. So if we set it to noon, it doesn't really change. And obviously this is going to change when you start adding lights inside. That will make it better. So uh, I'm probably not going to cover lights in this case because lights are a bit more iffy, but uh, I will do a, a secondary tutorial or a, uh, not a tutorial on that. But yeah, that is pretty much how an MLO with portals are created and everything else is on you, how you're going to fill out the interior with details and what what not textures and so on so i hope this uh, tutorial is gonna help you and i'll be seeing you all in the next one i'm sorry for making it so fucking long all right bye